Good afternoon and welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. During the question and answer session, please press star 1 on your touchtone phone. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect this time. I would like to introduce your speaker for today's conference, Mr. Jared Loop. Sir, you may begin. Great. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. This is the Brown Bag Lunch Series, a monthly webcast held at the lunch hour, uh, programmed by the Alliance for Community Trees. The trainings leverage local successes by amplifying to a larger audience to model organizations, methods, materials, and approaches. Sessions are planned to last no more than one hour, with two presenters speaking on the same topic from slightly different perspectives, each for about 10 to 15 minutes, followed by 5 to 15 minutes of questions and answers. This is a program of the Alliance for Community Trees, and we can yeah, I encourage you to consider joining if you're not a member. Today's session is Technology in the Urban Forest. Technology in trees is no more an oxymoron than urban forestry. If your mission is to restore, enhance, and protect the tree canopy of a given locality, then urban forestry technology tools can help you set and achieve ambitious goals using a suite of tools including GIS and tree benefit calculators. Extrapolating the data into bottom line dollars and cents can be a powerful tool for gaining the attention of public officials. Today we have two presenters. Holly Howard from Casey Trees and Scott Macko from uh, JV Research. Um, I want to thank both of them for being here and also thank the Home Depot Foundation and the USDA Forest Service for being sponsors. So first up is Scott Macko, whose primary responsibilities fall in the areas of urban forestry research, analysis, and management. He focuses on prospective resource management through complete analysis of urban forest structure, function, and value to the community. He has more than seven years of experience in planning, design, and implementation of urban forestry enhancement projects and developing the tools to facilitate effective resource management. Most recently, he worked at the Center for Urban Forest Research for the USDA Forest Service in Davis, California. He has a Master's of Science in Horticulture and Agronomy from the University of California, Davis, and a Bachelor of Science in Urban Forestry from the University of Washington's College of Forest Resources. Scott, it's all yours. Thanks, Jared. i got to update that bio. Um, <laughs> hey, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, and I can tell by some of the participants on this list that uh, I've, uh, I've talked to a few of you, and I know that uh, some of you are, are using uh, iTree. And that's what I'm here to talk about, technology in the urban forest, but specifically iTree software tools. Um, and what I plan on doing here, given our kind of short time frame uh, for this session, is just give you a very brief overview of, of iTree, starting at the basics, putting it in context of why it was developed and uh, what are its basic applications uh, and functions. And then, uh, as Jared just mentioned, uh, Holly is here from Casey Trees, and she's going to follow this up by giving you some perspective of how Casey has put iTree work uh, to work on the ground, and in this case, Washington, D.C., and, and hopefully answer some of your questions, um, you out there participating, that you may have, such as, you know, tools utilized, what did they use, how did they implement, and, and putting those results to work. And I, I just want to... Um, before I get started here, just preface this presentation with the fact that uh, it is not solely the work of myself uh, or Davy Tree, but it's that iTree is a cooperative effort between the Forest Service, USDA Forest Service, Davy Tree, which I represent, the National Arbor Day Foundation, Society of Municipal Arborists, and the International Society of Arbo Arboriculture. Uh, and, and just want to make sure that uh, any credit for this presentation and the tools themselves is given to the, uh, uh, the entire iTree cooperative. Uh, that being said, I'd like to just get started with, again, you know, starting at the beginning uh, of why, tree, why iTree was conceived. And uh, I think that, you know, all that starts with an image that uh, all of us can relate to. And I'm sure this looks familiar, and uh, again, and, and you can envision some kind of parallel scenario or scene such as this in, in the communities you serve. And you know, you just you just pause and look at this image for a minute, and it just doesn't look that nice. It looks hot, it looks dusty, it looks dirty. In general, it just kind of looks like a place you don't want to linger, you don't want to hang out, let alone shop or live. Now, add the 
green infrastructure, and all of a sudden, it's not just a street, but it's a vibrant community that actually looks rather pleasant. A place where you can imagine, so, imagine yourself shopping, living, and spending your free time. And, and I realize all you participating here, again, I recognize a lot of your names. Um, you are the choir, and, and I don't need to preach to you uh, about the uh, benefit of trees. You've all read the literature and know and understand that trees have value. They go beyond simple beautification. Trees have real tangible benefits to both us and the environment. They make cities cooler. They make, they make cities cleaner, safer, and more prosperous. So the question is, why are we always faced with the prospect of arguing in favor of trees? Well, I think it's apparent that trees aren't a no-brainer. There's a lot of considerations. Um, there are many costs that we need to take into account when planting trees. And all too often, we're faced with images like these that bring trees' value into question. Trees that have been improperly placed or maintained can actually reduce environmental value rather than enhance it. And this is what causes our, our community decision makers to ask that fundamental question. Are trees worth the cost to plant and maintain over the long run? And, you know, pictures can say it's much better than I could ever, but this is it. You know, until, until now, we didn't have the tools with, without iTree. But with iTree, for the first time, we actually have the ability to demonstrate that trees have quantifiable value. And that allows us to start thinking about trees as assets rather than historically just as amenities, possibly at best, or, or even worse, liabilities. And when we demonstrate that trees are assets, we can make the argument that, you know, not like, unlike uh, other components of our city's infrastructure, streets, buildings, or sidewalks, trees need proactive management. And when you proactively invest in your trees' care and maintenance, their health and longevity go up, and so do the environmental services they provide. Now again, just to kind of step back and put this into a context to, to give you that understanding of iTree that I want you to walk away with here, is that you need to understand that the catalyst for iTree was and continues to be you, the participants here representing your communities. For the last 20 or so years, you've been saying that your programs are in jeopardy and you need to be able to highlight the environmental services trees provide, demonstrate the trees you don't have worth and are worth that investment to plant and maintain, and you need the tools, the tools to improve resource management, decision making, and, and track their progress. And you'll be uh, uh, happy to know that your taxpayer dollars have, uh, have paid off. The Forest Service has responded to your pleas. For the better part of the last two decades, scientists such as uh, Dave Nowak, who you've all heard of out of Syracuse, New York, and, and scientists like Greg McPherson out in Davis, California, they've been working uh, to develop the science, the models, to satisfy the need for understanding trees and how they function in our computer or communities. And, and this approach is really the foundation for iTree, and it starts with a basic understanding of structure. You have to know what you have in your resource. What trees are present, what species, what size they are, their dimensions, their leaf area, their canopy size how those trees are distributed across the landscape. And if we understand the structure, what's out there, well then that tells us a little bit something about how trees function, the environmental services trees provide, right? The benefits, the air quality improvements, the stormwater mitigation, the carbon sequestration, the energy savings that trees provide. But it's not just enough to talk about trees in terms of basic functionality in, in the raw sense, in terms of tons of carbon sequestered or, or gallons of stormwater saved, we have to put it into terms our leaders, our decision makers can understand, dollars and cents. They understand the value of uh, the dollar cost of planting and maintaining those trees, so we have to put the benefits in those same terms. And then finally, management. How do we manipulate the structure of that forest? How do we optimize that structure? to affect function and give us the best return on our investment dollar. Now, you should all be uh, happy to know uh, uh, further that it's not just, it has not just been the Forest Service that has been responding 
and working on your behalf, but it's been industry, it's been the nonprofits and the professional societies that represent you. All of those cooperators uh, that I mentioned on the first slide. For the past three years, we have worked to pull together all of the science, the individual models that the Forest Service has been developing, and package it as public domain software, making both the tools and their support freely accessible to any individual, community, consultant of any size. To that, uh, to that end, we released version 1.0 of iTree. Uh, geez, it's been, it's been almost uh, two years now. That was back in August 2006 in, at ISA Minneapolis. And then through a framework of development, dissemination, and refinement, we've continued to update the tools and have released uh, version 2.0 of iTree this past March. And we're not stopping. We have plans to continue refinement and development based on, on, on both new available science and just as importantly, the feedback that we're getting from the users like you. So all right, let's get into it here. What's included with iTree? Um, I think uh, uh, as you may be aware of at this point, iTree is not a single application but it is actually a collection of tools that revolve around two main urban forest assessment applications, one that focuses on street tree populations exclusively and one that is uh, used when assessing the resource at the ecosystem level, that is, all trees that comprise the urban forest. Now, these are not intended to be day-to-day -day inventory management tools, but rather just to give you a snapshot in time of structure, function, value, and management needs, and you're going to hear me say that over and over again. Going beyond these two applications, we have a variety of utilities that uh, provide added efficiencies, such as data collection tools, and, and added functionality, added functionality, excuse me, such as the storm damage assessment protocol. And we'll get into uh, uh, a little more of the details as we move on here. But the point is, is that everything you need to get you from field data collection to application to reporting results is included with iTree. Now this all begins to sound a little bit familiar, inventory software, management tools, um, but I am here to tell you that iTree is different and uh, that, that starts with the fact that it is non-proprietary. It is public domain software, it is peer-reviewed science from the Forest Service that is freely accessible, uh, both to acquire the tools and their support and, and the methods that are involved in calculating the results. It is information on structure, it is information on function, value, and management needs, giving that holistic view of the urban forest resource. And I know of no other tools out there that allow you to scale your analysis to an individual tree, a neighborhood, a community, or even a state level, and still provide results at the species and tree level. Now the problem with this kind of detail is that there is no magic bullet to inventory. You can't do this through remote sensing or, or just GIS. You have to have local field inventory data. That is prerequisite. That is required. But the good news is, is that you don't have to complete a full inventory. Uh, we do have a statistically based standardized sampling protocol method and utility to get you through that process of uh, conducting a sample inventory. Uh, all right, so with the limited time I have left, so we have some time for questions here, I'm just going to do a quick overview of the main functionality um, that iTree does provide. And the first of those is, our, is, our, is, is one of our flagship assessment tools uh, for assessing street tree populations, and that is Stratum, developed solely to focus on street trees. And people always ask the question, well, why just street trees? Why is it important when it only comprises maybe 10% of the uh, population of our urban forest at best. And while they do comprise a small element of our urban forest, they're the ones we're concerned with most often. They're visible. They take a lot of maintenance. Uh, they're, they're you know, always there in, in uh, conflict with our infrastructure and in direct uh, contact with the humans that uh, are in our cities. And as a consequence of that, they can easily command 70, 80, 90 percent of our management time or dollars, even though they represent only 10 percent of the trees out there. Stratum is climate zone based and designed to be quick, easy, flexible in terms of input. Uh, it accepts existing inventories if you have them. It accepts new 
complete or sample inventories as long as you include two basic attributes, and that is species and DBH. Like much of iTree, the more you put into it, the more you get out. But with only the required fields in stratum, you can get basic structure, function, and value reports that lead you to a benefit-cost ratio. That is, for every dollar you invest in your street trees, what are they providing in return in terms of energy savings, improved air quality, stormwater mitigation, carbon offsets, and increased property values. And in the case you see on your screen, it's about five to one. For every dollar this community is spending on planting and maintaining those trees, they're getting about $5.33 in benefits back. Now, if your purview of interest goes beyond street trees to park trees, trees on private land, or, or, or any other off-street location, then your assessment tool of choice is the Urban Forest Effects Model, otherwise known as U4. It allows you to look at your entire urban forest and its interactions with uh, humans and the environment at the ecosystem level. The analysis requires input of uh, local air pollution and weather data in addition to very specific field data requirements. And, and typically, because few communities are really in a position of completing uh, a full inventory for their entire urban forest, all trees in their urban forest, U4 is typically used with a sample inventory of approximately 30 or so to 200 tenth acre plots randomly scattered throughout the uh, area of interest. Again, depending on uh, accuracy desired. The results give you information that uh, I hope by now is starting to become familiar to you. Resource structure, function, value, and management needs. But in this sense, we're talking about at the ecosystem level. And I just want to mention again, uh, again, we're, we're, we're out of time here, but and we don't have time to really explore these in any depth, but while U4 and Stratum are, are kind of the core applications of iTree, there's much more to be utilized and explored. We have the Mobile Community Tree Inventory Tool, otherwise known as MCity, that allows you to track tree records and their attributes. It's a great place to start for resource strat communities that are uh, looking to develop an inventory and have nothing to date. We have the Storm Damage Assessment Protocol that provides a standardized method for assessing the time and funds needed to mitigate widespread storm damage. And new to iTree 2.0 uh, this past March is the species selector that produces a potential planting list based on user inputs of the environmental services desired. Beyond this, as we've already discussed a little bit, we have the data collection tools to get you in and out of the field in an efficient manner, such as the uh, uh, sample inventory, uh, generators, and the PDA utilities. Um, we are at time, and, and just to conclude, I just hope that I've conveyed enough to allow you to understand what iTree is, but you know, perhaps more importantly, how the tools can be used by any community, big or small. One, that is to highlight tree's value, allowing you to justify program expenditures and develop new funding sources. And two, really take those next steps to move your program forward by allowing you to make informed decisions based on local, tangible data, and track your progress in reaching your goals. Uh, for those of you who haven't visited itreetools.org, uh, this is your point of access, your portal to all things itree. You'll find a users forum. You'll find a uh, uh, software tools uh, request form. And you can get uh, all your questions that we can't address here today answered uh, online at itreetools. And I'll, I'll take some questions if we have time, Jared. Awesome. Thanks, Scott. Uh, if the operator can open up the lines for questions and answers, please. Thank you. We will now begin the question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, please press star then 1. To withdraw your question, press star then 2. Once again, to ask a question, press star then 1. One moment, please. OK. And uh, um, attendees can also ask questions online. There's a question manager box there. and. Feel free to type it in, and if you do it that way, then I'll come on and ask the question for you. So either way. So our first question is, do you have climate data for Alaska? First question comes from Ron Morales. Let me ask you a question. Uh, the question would be is which uh, handheld computer 
does he recommend for use with iTray? Uh, the, the PDA um, utilities are all pocket PC based, which means they won't work on a Palm device or any other operating system. It has to be a Windows pocket PC. And anything you can find on the market, I think they're up to Windows Mobile 6.0 right now, but uh, this works um, uh, with previous versions as well, 5.0, 4.0, and uh, uh, I believe even what they were calling Windows 2002 and 2003 before that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do, we, do you have climate data for Alaska to analyze tree benefits? We do. It's a combination it, of uh, in, in stratum, which is climate zone based, it generalized climate models and, and species list. There are a couple very large climate zones that comprise the northern mountain uh, and prairies and the, uh, I don't have the names in front of me, but I think it's the uh, um, uh, inner mountain west. Um, I could be wrong, don't quote me on that, but there is climate data for, for Alaska right now. The only missing climate zone in the U.S. at this point is central Florida, and we're actually out collecting data as we speak um, to get that reference city data into stratum, and that data will go to the Forest Service. The field data will go to the Forest Service and be modeled and then hopefully available sometime late this year for use. Okay. And what's the unit that you're showing on your slides? Is it a Palm Pilot or a cell phone, and how do people use those? Um, the unit is, again, they're, they're, they come in many forms, pocket PCs, but it is a Windows-based uh, pocket PC. That particular one there is a HP IPAC is what those units are called. Again, pocket PC-based, and you can find those on phones now. If it was me looking to select a uh, PDA for use with iTree, I'd go out and find, uh, uh, again, if it was solely for use for data collection, I'd go out and find the cheapest compatible unit you can find. It's going to be out there in the weather. They're going to get dropped. <coughs> find a cheap one. You can find them on eBay. You can find them brand new off the shelves, but it has to be Windows PC pocket based. Pocket and PC based. What's the interface between iTree and ArborView? ArborView. Um, ArborView, uh, I, I believe, is a proprietary uh, tree inventory management system. And I don't know that uh, there is a, a direct interface uh, with iTree. iTree, um, I'll tell you, with the Street Tree Resources Assessment Tools, where many people have existing inventory that they want to plug into Stratum to get an understanding of structure, function, value, and management needs, that can be derived from any inventory, whether it's a paper-based inventory, something you did using an Excel spreadsheet, or something you did in proprietary software such as ArborView, uh, TreeKeeper, or anything. Any, there, there's a there's two dozen uh, products out there in the market, but with uh, you know, a, a couple hours and uh, the iTree manual, you can reconfigure that database, uh, that inventory for direct input, um, direct import into iTree. Okay. Have you found that the more trees per area in a street inventory will give you a greater benefit cost ratio? Mm, that all depends on the cost to, uh, to manage those trees. Um, typically, uh, you know, where, where it's uh, rubber meets the road there is when you, you try to understand how much you're spending on a per tree basis and then you average out the benefits to a per tree basis and, and Stratum does that for you, but I'm not sure it's um, uh, fair to make that uh, analogy. More trees in a given area gives you a higher benefit to cost ratio. It all depends on what you're spending to manage those trees in that area. And is the report output process working yet with this update? Um, I'm not sure exactly what that question refers to, but it may refer to our report generator for the urban uh, uh, the ecosystem assessment tool, and that's U4 uh, in the presentation that I just gave. And 
as of version 2.0 this past March, we did add a new functionality to U4. And if I might say, it's quite impressive. It actually produces push button, a state of the urban forest report, written 18-page report based on um, all the charts, tables, results that U4 produces. And this question asker uh, also said in the past they've had to ship to Dave to run. Yeah, so that's also for U4. Uh, U4 has an interface, an application shell that uh, is managed by the user on their desktop computer. The actual number crunching, the engine that derives those values, um, is done on a computer in Syracuse, New York, by the Forest Service. It, it sounds like uh, a, a crazy way to do things and uh, uh, not the most fluid, but it is automated at this point. And it's all push button. You inventory your data, you import it to this application, and you send off through this application shell your data to uh, Syracuse where it's transformed into results, and those are spit back to you in a format that is just directly sucked into the application shell, and then reports are available as charts, graphs, and again, this, this automatic report generator. And also, a new mapping component is also available in U4. Okay, and someone does ask, uh, how long will it be before there is an, uh, there's a built, oh, sorry, there is an inbuilt mapping system allowing on-site plotting of the trees during inventory? Um, I don't have the answer to that, but I will tell you that our vision for the future, for the foreseeable future, um, uh, with iTree is, is, is distilling. You know, this is really just a first stab at culling all this science, all these models, these individual spreadsheets that were scattered around to the Forest Service, and pulling them together under one umbrella, one portal for accessibility and support, and uh, making them actually available and functional. And our vision, vision for the future is to, uh, year by year, as, as new science is developed and feedback you know, from the field and the users, is to cull these down and eventually transform iTree into a single application, where it's one application. There's no, you don't have to distinguish between Stratum or U4 or M-City or Storm Damage Assessment Protocol. It's one application, and it's completely integrated with a spatial component, where everything is managed right through the application. Uh, we hope that we will achieve significant progress in the next year, um, but we're, we're not seeing the, the full end, probably for another two, three, four years uh, before we get to a, a truly envisioned finished product. All right. Are you briefly, or are, are you able to briefly say how the dollar value for the benefits is set? That is, uh, it is kind of a long story, um, and those are all done typically um, through econ environmental economic analysis uh, as, as externality. Um, some things are um, you know, quite easy to understand how the value was um, uh, approached. You know, if a, if a tree, for example, saves a homeowner by shading directly so many kilowatts an hour, well, you can just look at your utility bill and see what you're spending uh, per kilowatt hour uh, for, for air conditioning, and that's a tangible benefit in dollars and cents that makes sense. Air pollution, uh, carbon, uh, sometimes those uh, uh, Tons of particulate matter or carbon, NOx, SOx, ozone, those are traded on open market, and those can be open market values. Um, Stormwater, uh, mitigation, gallons intercepted, those are a little bit trickier, um, trickier to assess, and that's done by you know, typically evaluating best management practices, looking at uh, both capture and conveyance of stormwater and the cost of doing that and breaking it down into some unit of measurement, such as a gallon or, or meter squared of water. Um, all those methods uh, for attaching the value, again, are, are available. If you're looking on the stratum side, those are available through the tree guides, the companion tree guide, which is the methodology for stratum, and that can be linked to, to right through iTree tools. Um, and then there is also a separate document and methods for the U4 application, and the dollar values are all documented in there as well. Great. Does the operator have any other questions in queue? We do have another question from John Levine. You may ask your question. Yeah, hi, I've been doing, I've been inventorying uh, county parks about the past month using uh, 
I tree. And uh, I was wondering at the PDA level, if data is collected with stratum, will I be able to use that data with U4? Typically, at this point, not. And that all, that all kind of uh, goes back to how these models were conceived and where they came from. And there were slightly different approaches taken based on kind of the simplistic climate zone methodology versus the local um, air pollution weather data methodology that U4 uses. And uh, uh, unfortunately, when people do typical you know, street tree inventories and, and oftentimes a, even an urban park tree inventory, the one thing they will not collect is the crown dimensions. Height of the tree, bowl height, the crown height, and then the crown diameter. And stratum doesn't require that because that's all kind of wrapped into these climate zone um, algorithms. Right. But U4 does require those crown dimension data. So if you want that inventory to be compatible with U4, you have to be collecting those crown dimensions. OK, and if I were to collect that in U4 format, would I be able to get some of the same products I get out of the Stratum software? Yes. Yes, OK. Yes. Uh, excellent, thank you. Okay, we will move on to Holly's presentation, and um, after that, there will be time for questions for either presenter. So, if you have other questions for Scott, you can hold on to those. So, Holly Howard. Uh, um, Holly Howard has been with Casey Trees for over five years, currently as the Director of Geographic Resources. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of New Hampshire and completed her graduate work in Environmental Science, GIS, at the University of Tasmania, Australia. She is an ISA certified arborist and a master gardener. Holly, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Jared, and thanks for everybody for joining us today. Um, as Scott said, we have worked with iTree tools for quite a few years. We've done U4 analysis and uh, stratum, so I'll give you some examples of that today. See if I can move forward here. So the overview today, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background on Casey Trees here in Washington, D.C., but um, we've got some really innovative programs, but I'll be focusing on my program area, which is the GIS technology, and how we use web tools and analysis to highlight the benefits of trees and inform and educate from the technology and the data that we collect, and then a little bit about our upcoming projects. One thing I really like about this technology so far is sitting at my desk in my comfortable office doing a presentation. <laughs> um, so Casey Trees programs and initiatives, um, I'll start there. Our mission of Casey Trees is to restore, enhance, and protect the tree canopy of the nation's capital. Um, we work with many district partners. Um, of course, here in the district, we have the National Park Service, Forest Service lands, but um, because our boundaries are really right here in the district, we do focus a lot on our district partners and community organizations, as many of you know, we can't really do it without our volunteers or these community organizations. So um, we certainly partner with them as well. Casey Tree started in about 2001, 2002, and um, it has evolved quite a lot since then. And we have now focused on these four main program areas, which seem to be working quite well for us. Um, I'm going to zip through the first three, but and obviously concentrate on the last one. Um, but tree planting and stewardship is now our um, our, our signature uh, program area. We plant about a thousand trees a year. Um, we've planted about five thousand in the past few years. Um, but we didn't start planting until Arbor Day 2003, um, because we really did do some planning before our planting program began. Our education program, we have a great citizen forester program. We have over 200 volunteers that have become citizen foresters, and then we you know, have hundreds and hundreds of volunteers that come out with us every year. And we have uh, internship programs. We have nine high school students that are working with us right now, DC high school students. Um, planning and design, you know, this is you know, creating the political will for, um, for trees in the district. So we really do some advocacy work here, as well as look at tree space design, tree space dimensions. Um, trying to put Jim Urban's work um, in, in practice. Okay, geographic resources. And we're going to go to a larger slide on this one. Um, we really started, this is actually, it has morphed as well. We really started out, the first name was GIS and IT. 
um, because we were kind of a support um, program in, in the inception of Casey Trees. And we did a lot of mapping and data collection, but we have grown a lot in the past five years. Uh, the second bullet here, the urban tree canopy goal setting, that can be a whole separate brown bag in itself. So I'm just going to skip that and talk, ask me questions later on that or call me on the side. Um, but I'm going to focus on our inventory program and web and the web tools in this, in this talk. Okay, so using GIS technology. Um, again, we started with an inventory in 2002. Um, as Scott was saying, you know, you really need to plan before you plant. And, and what happened when we got this, the endowment in 2002 was how do we start? Where do we go from here? There's a street tree crisis. And the real low-hanging fruit is those street trees. They're very visible. Um, you have four times the benefit of trees over impervious surface than over pervious surface. Um, so we just said, OK, what's the street tree inventory? And the city, the city had not had a maintained, updated inventory. So that's exactly where we started. Since then, we have done many inventories. Um, I get many questions about inventory. And um, as you can see here, the 2002 inventory. And then in 2004, we did a plot inventory. Um, we've run stratum analysis. And I'll go into more detail about that in a minute. This year, we're doing a home energy study, which is um, looking at the environmental benefits or the, um, the effect of trees on home energy costs, which hopefully will be quite interesting. And we're doing that right here in DC when we get 200 volunteers to donate their homes to a data collection. And, hope, and we're re revisiting our trees for quality assurance. Hopefully, we won't have a high mortality there. OK, and just quickly, our inventory program data collection. Um, I can't stress this enough. I get a lot of calls on inventory. And um, you know, how, do you, how do you define your data fields, and how do you choose which data fields to collect? And trust me, do not over collect what you need. Really base your data fields on your goals. Come up with what goals you want um, to have answered um, by, by doing your inventory first, and then come up with your data field. So for example, as Scott said, you, stratum, you really can just start with DBH and species, and, and you can run a stratum analysis. But the more information that you collect, the more robust your stratum reports will be. Um, and same with, uh, and then U4 obviously does have all of that crown information that you need to collect. So be clear on what you want to collect when you're doing data collection. Um, methods, maps versus tablet. I'll go into, a, I have a slide on this later. Um, it pains me to still use maps and paper in the field. Um, but really, there is some good reasons for this. And we use a tablet PC. You can see the man using it here. Um, we started to use this, which is great in the field. It, it has the full ArcGIS program on there. And that's how we do our data collection. We do our data collection, and then we um, process it. And um, we make sure that we have the fields for Stratum and U4. Um, so that we can run the analysis. And then someone was asking about the pocket PC. That's what we use. Um, that's that other one there on the right. OK, and then our inventory model, data collection. Um, of course, number one is safety for our goals. Um, when I talked about our citizen foresters on this one, I would say participant satisfaction is number one. But really, I'd like to see data quality at number one. Um, but again, we cannot do this without our citizen forester volunteers. And our model has always been that we will hire college interns in the summer, and then um, we never send them out alone. And so we'll always have citizen volunteers go out with them, and quite often high school students as well. And this works really well for us as far as stewardship, awareness, and, um, and all the outreach that goes along with that. And this, people can check out this, um, this table in the archives. But I, in, I'm not going to dwell on it now. But if you are deciding between using tablet and paper in the field, these are um, some real var variables that you really want to consider. OK, once you've collected all this data and you have this technology and you've run some analysis, um, how can you use it to highlight benefits of trees? And of course, you want to inform and educate and tell people about it. So often, you, know, you collect all this data, and it sits on a shelf. And you're like, oh, I got all this data. And it just, it's, uh, it's sitting there. And you, you, you want to be able to put it out there for people to use. Of course, I want to start with iTree and how we have benefited from this tool. Um, this uh, list on the left is a tip of the iceberg of what you're going to get when you do a U4 or an iTree study, even Stratum. Um, the small picture here, someone was asking about the report that you get. But that, um, 
the link on the bottom there, one of them links to our report for Washington, D.C., and um, it's a full color document. It's, a, it's, it's been a fabulous outreach tool for us. Um, but really, there's some really good um, information that you're going to get here. One thing I want to point out is this priority planting areas. That is just based on uh, population and tree density, and it's just in, it's an interesting thing when you, you know, for our organization, who's looking at planting, kind of giving us some idea of where to plant. The red area there is actually my neighborhood. <laughs> Not the best. Okay, and I wanted to throw this slide up there because this shows the 200 plots. As Scott said, you can do from anywhere from 30 to 200 plots, but in DC, we chose to do 200 tenth of an acre plots, um, and this is where they were. Um, and then. That you can see the red circle there is where the plot is, and then the data collection tool that we use. This slide just shows, a, a, again, a brief um, list of the of what you can get from using from doing a stratum analysis. Um, we did we ran our 2002 data through iTree, and um, I'm going to show you what we how we use that in a web tool in a minute. And um, okay, so I'm going to go right on here to the web tools that we use. Um, we have five. Web, we have three online right now: um, the Casey Trees True Math in 2004, and the Benefits Calculator and the Google Earth site we just did this past year. So I'm going to go into those, and the other two are kind of on deck. This one is our Casey Trees Tree Map. It's dear to my heart. It's the first one that we threw up there. It's um, from 2004, and this is the data that we collected from 2002, and it locates all the trees in the district. You put your, um, you click on a tree, and it brings up, and you can zoom in. Sorry, you can zoom into your area of the district. Here we zoomed into Dupont Circle. It's on the right there, um, and then once you zoom in, if you click on a tree, it gives you the environmental and economic benefits of that tree. And these are all the data that we collected for um, the 2002 inventory. And this was a lesson learned. We really over-collected data here. We thought, oh, well, we should say if there's a conch on every single tree. And so yes or no, is there a conch? And um, <laughs> so we had a lot of data fields. And I think it's interesting for people to go on t and take a look at their tree and and get the information about it. But now, now it's 2008, and the data is still 2002. So we are looking to update this. Oh, and again, just to point out, again, this environmental and economic value here is solely based on the iTree tools model. OK, and I'm going to show you our tree benefits calculator, which also is 2007. Um, I credit this calculator to Mike Alonzo, who is our GIS specialist here. He worked hard on this one. And again, this is also um, based on iTree. And this is, it, this is a little bit different because this is any tree in your yard or neighborhood. Let's say your favorite tree is a Dawn Redwood. Um, you can put Dawn Redwood in there, and, three, and so you, you planted a three-inch Dawn Redwood, and you can put that in there, and it will give you, um, it will spit out the results, the, event, the economic and ecological benefits of that tree. Um, I have an example here of an American elm, which is 20 inches, and a single-family home. And this is the results that you get. The tabs at the top will show you um, the different uh, variables that you can look at. The overall benefits of this tree is saying 160 a year based on um, the iTree tools. Um, we also have stormwater, property value. And this is all on our website, obviously, if you want to go in and take a better look. Um, energy, air quality, CO2. Uh, CO2 certainly is a, is a big one these days. People really like to, um, everybody wants to offset their carbon footprint. And so um, see, looking at the sequestered and avoided is, is quite interesting for people. Okay, and then I want to just, the, the third uh, web tool or website that we have up there is a Google Earth site that, that we developed last year, uh, dcgreenmap.org. And it is under dcgreenmap.org because we started it as a collaborative here in D.C. I really wanted to um, have all the different greening agencies in the district develop this tree map, work together to kind of have a green map of Washington, D.C. Um, so what this one is showing is Casey Trees plantings. We've done over 250 plantings. And these, this is showing the trees um, 
that have been planted in the district. This is just a snapshot, and it's a Google site, so it's similar to MapQuest, and you can um, pan around, and if you click on one of those trees, it will give you uh, the species, the DBH, and the date it was planted, and um, there's a, a, a event photos if you want to see a picture of yourself planting the tree, which many people do. You can go in and do that. Um, and then here's a list of the other layers that we have on there. So we've got planting events. Um, we've done some inventories with National Park Service, um, DuPont Circle Citizens Association, which is a neighborhood group that wanted to do an inventory. We worked with them. Um, they derived their own goals of what they wanted to do. And that's one instance where we used paper maps because of who was doing the data collection um, and a public schools inventory. And so these are all different layers on the Google Maps site that we're using. And this has been a really good, a really good tool as well. The street tree watering campaign that we did, um, this is something we're doing in, in conjunction with the Urban Forestry Administration where um, people can zoom in and see where the newly planted street trees are and then they can sign up to steward that tree and put a um, and volunteer to put an ooze tube on that tree and um, and they can sign up right on the site. So that's been a good um, collaborative tool. Okay, and then quickly upcoming projects. Um, again, we're partnering with Davey to do a tree suitability model. Um, we're looking to do right tree, right place, and this is right in your yard where um, you'd have a spatial component that would show your house and your backyard and maybe a patio um, and anything else in there that might um, hint as to what species of tree to plant. And um, we're hoping to give a list of, uh, of what trees to plant there. And then, of course, we can connect that with the tree benefits calculator and tell you what benefits you'll get from that. Um, and then we're looking at doing a carbon footprint by, um, if people want to plant trees with us, they can offset their carbon footprint. Okay, well that's it. This is how to contact me. If you don't get your question in today, certainly give me a call. And then if you have questions about our other programs, certainly yeah, visit our website. Thanks so much, Jerry. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you, Holly. If uh, the operator can open the question or the lines for questions and answers, please. Thank you. Once again, to ask a question, press star then one. And again, you can also ask questions online. And before we get into the questions, I'll also mention that I'm going to save a few minutes at the end because we have a special guest presenter. Um, so I'm going to start and just ask, um, from your experience, Holly, when talking with uh, local leaders or elected officials, what have you found is the most applicable function, um, you know, energy or air pollution or strong water or whatever have you, either in terms of what they're most receptive to hearing about, you know, what they're asking you to talk about, or what has the largest value? Oh, that's a good question, Jared, and probably the Director of Planning and Design would be best at that, but I, we really have been talking a lot about stormwater um, here in the district. We've got two rivers that run right through the district, um, the Anacostia and the Potomac River, so probably different, di different cities, but um, we did, a, 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 con we did a, a large study last year with the Environmental Protection Agency on stormwater and how green space affects uh, stormwater. And, that that show that was with green roofs and trees, and I think that was that's a big push for um, implementing the Department of the Environment to get started here in the district. So I would start with stormwater, and I really think there is this carbon craze right now. So, and I don't mean to say that in negative tone, but I do feel like there's um, that's something that people can really bite into right now because it is becoming a national. Um, it's obviously an international, but luckily nationally, people are starting to do think about that. Okay. Um. How do we get an environmental and economic value calculated for 10,000 ash trees to demonstrate value of treatment versus destruction? Um, are you, is that question meaning they want to run it through the calculator? Because that would be a good, I, I would send it to Dave Nowak, <laughs> the Forest Service. Sounds like it, yeah. <laughs> so ask Dave Nowak. But maybe you could put one through um, our calculator, see what you come up with, and multiply it times 10,000. Okay. How's that sound? Is the tree benefit calculator something other folks can use on their own websites as far as easily shared and used, or does it need to be more specific localized info to work? Um, actually, you can use it on your website. Um, we are going to try and make it um, a national site. I, I, I have to check, but I do think right now, maybe Scott, you can help me with this, but I think right now it's set up for the Piedmont area, which is where Washington, D.C. is. Um, and so we'd have to recalibrate it for different areas of the country, but um, right now it's set up for the Piedmont region. 
Yeah, Holly, you're correct. Thanks. It's uh, it, right now. It's set up as kind of just proof of concept uh, for the Piedmont region in D.C. And hopefully um, this summer we will have a national site up and running, and it'll allow you to go in and input your zip code. And by zip code, it will automatically just choose the correct and appropriate climate zone, uh, benefit models, and uh, species list to, to give you the appropriate outputs for your uh, local uh, uh, site. So we are working on that. Uh, how much does this program cost DC KC trees to date? And uh, what other resources would you say a group should have in place before they take on iTree as a project? Um, well, iTree, as Scott said, it's a, it's a free tool. If you, um, it, you can download the iTree tools for free. Um, it really depends on how extensive uh, you, you know, how big your municipality is. You can do your neighborhood if you'd like. So the resources um, really depend uh, a lot on what your data collection is going to be. Um, Casey Trees is an endowment, so we do have resources of our own, and so we were able to work with the city to do this extensive study of of the district, but there, and uh, we do use college interns. But we, you, if you have that citizen forester base, and you can run trainings for them, that saves you a lot of money. And it also, the the stewardship and the awareness that you get by using um, citizen volunteers is huge. We have them all put in these orange vests and throw them out into the city, and so um, there's a lot of visibility there. Um, but you're gonna, you know, you're looking at hardware for one thing. It's something you really want to consider. Um, as Scott mentioned, the IPACs and um, and then staff resources. But again, you know, iTree tools is um, is a freeware. Yeah, and I'll just add, Holly, if I, if I may, it is it's definitely in the public domain, and there's no cost for accepting it. But implementing these tools as um, you know is a different question, and I think that's the question here, and it's a good one. Um, you know, you can do this uh, as cheap or as expensive as you want, and I've worked with communities to do it every which way possible. You know, if you're looking to just get started, go out, do a quick, dirty assessment of your street tree population, like Holly was saying. You can just do the minimum species and DBH data, do a sample inventory. There's the protocol. Go out and do a 5%. And if you're a, you know, small community, 25, 50,000 uh, uh, population, I mean, you can get a group of volunteers in a couple Saturday afternoons, knock out a sample inventory, and be running your uh, reports in stratum. U4, a little bit more robust, a little bit more complex, takes a little bit more uh, uh, planning on those plot locations and how robust that uh, um, inventory is going to be. But I've seen a, a number of people have done it in-house. There have been a number of nonprofits that have done it with uh, volunteers, and there have been many communities that have just said, hey, I love it. I want the results. We can use it. It's going to help move our program forward, but I want somebody else to do it. And they'll go out and hire a consultant to collect that data for them. It may cost them you know, $200 per plot times 200 plots, and it's a spend, but to these communities, it's been worth it. Great. And does the operator have any questions in queue? At this time, I have no questions. Okay. Um, let me take one last question then, and then we'll go to our special presenter. Um, is the cost model used via iTree in line with the U.S. Forest Department's cost-benefit value? Um, I'm I'm not sure exactly what that question is asking, and I'd be uh, happy if the if, if if you want to provide a little more detail to try to explore that with you, or, or we can do it offline either way. Okay. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll provide Scott and Holly's contact information afterwards, and the person can um, call you or drop you an email? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, great. Um, so let's move over. Um, and thank you very much, Holly. Um, yeah, thank you. We'll give a, a couple minutes. I think many of us have heard about uh, the Tales from the Urban Forest series or are familiar with them. And Soundprint Media is working on another project that is in line with GIS. So we wanted to give Moira Rankin a few minutes to tell everyone about what that project is. Moira, are you there? Um, is the operator able to pull her over? She can dial in as a leader. Yeah. She just have to go ahead and press star zero. Hey, Moira.
Just one moment, okay? Thank you. Her line is open now. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Hi, Jared. Thanks so much for uh, letting me come on and just uh, this has been a great, great presentation. And thank you both uh, for uh, uh, the information. It's just been fascinating. Um, briefly, Samprint is a uh, public broadcasting company, and we have uh, produced, as Jared mentioned, um, a, a series called Tales from Urban Forest. There's the URL. And um, it was done uh, with funding from the U.S. Um, Forest Service and the American Forest. It has documentaries and short stories. Uh, some of the stories included, for example, um, a documentary on the uh, project in Baltimore, Maryland, which is really comprehensive, um, looking not just at uh, urban trees, but all kinds of issues, uh, sewer runoff and water runoff, and uh, helping uh, citizens understand what the value is of uh, a green cover in their neighborhood and getting them to participate in projects. We had uh, other stories that looked at uh, trees in the Chesapeake Bay. Um, we weren't limited to just the East Coast. We went south and looked at urban heat islands, um, to Chicago to look at the effect of trees on neighborhoods, um, especially uh, neighborhoods uh, where poverty is very high. And then we also looked at uh, urban planning issues. And if you go to that site, at talesfromurbanforest.org, you can listen. We stream it all, and you can download it, uh, short stories and documentaries. Um, we also have been involved with, um, oops, there we go, oh, uh, with educational projects and been funded by the U.S. Department of Education to help schools use different kinds of technologies. And one of them is a, is a GIS project that we were involved with um, in Mississippi and in Virginia Beach. And if you go to videoclassroom.org, uh, which is one of our other sites, you can uh, just put in GIS and you can find all the stories that we did with teachers who were using GIS to teach math, to teach science, to teach social studies. Um, at that point, it was all Esri, which, as most of you know, is not intuitive. So it was quite a challenge for the teachers. I'm really delighted to hear about iTree, and I had read about it earlier, but it just wasn't available at that time. Um, and th this particular group did a community atlas. Uh, it was a very uh, small area, a town in Mississippi, and they got their students involved in a wide variety of, of issues in their community. So that has led us to think that uh, citizens um, have, can be scientists, and they can help document uh, not only urban forests but other uh, ecological issues as well. And that a lot of the data that uh, the citizens and, and the groups here that are involved with urban forests um, are gathering can actually help scientists ground truth. Um, so we've been talking to NASA and to some of their educators that use Landsat data to help uh, schools and informal science groups like community organizations um, to solve problems and to vi help uh, people visualize uh, solutions to problems. Um, and we are interested in going into the National Science Foundation to uh, uh, propose uh, a, a pretty extensive project where we would be working with citizen groups across the country and scientists who need to have data for their own research projects. And the two could cross-pollinate each other is how we're sort of looking at it. This is very quick, and I can give a, you a lot more detail if you'd like to uh, uh, contact me. But um, I, basically, we're looking for groups across the country who might be interested in working on uh, this kind of project. It would be about two years. Uh, we would be seeking funding for you, your group, to um, collect your data that you would like to collect, and that would also be beneficial to science, scientists who would be uh, hooked up with you. 
and we're locating different scientists right now who have different kinds of projects. Of course, many of them are interested specifically in um, urban canopy and urban forest and green cover, but there are also other ecological research issues that uh, they think working with some of the groups in ACT um, could really be beneficial. Um, this is really just a solicitation of interest. And so if you want to write to Jared or to me, um, just let us know what you'd like to learn about and do with um, GIS and its uh, cousin Landsat, um, which is most of you know our images. Um, and then we can start working with you directly. Uh, we're developing a proposal right now, and so we've got plenty of time to shape it to what you all would like. So that's it. <laughs> Great. And thank you, Moira. So the Alliance for Community Trees will um, stay in touch with this project um, through Moira. So if you're interested, like she says, get in touch with her or stay in touch with the Alliance for Community Trees, and we'll keep a loop on what that's about. So thanks very much. Okay, uh, so we're at the end. I want to thank all of our presenters, Scott, Holly, and Moira. Thanks to all our participants who listened in. Thanks to the Home Depot Foundation and the Forest Service for sponsoring this. Our next webcast is Trees and Transportation. It's on July 17th. The only other thing I'd request is if everyone could go out to that survey and take a quick look at that. Um, there are four questions, and your answers to that really help us to better develop these sessions. All right. Again, thanks to everyone, presenters, uh, sponsors, and attendees. Thanks, Jared. Thank you. Thanks, Jared. Thank you for joining today's conference call. You may disconnect at this time.